One of the privileges of heading down to the Durham County, North Carolina probate or state clerk's office at least two to three times a week and really getting to know the deputy clerks and uh, Clerk Thompson as of the time of this recording uh, uh, is that I get to be able to really see how the probate process works in North Carolina. And it allows me to help folks who are going through the probate process um, deal with it in a, an efficient manner. That's what we're going to look at today. I'm going to share some of the things that was given to me that you may find very helpful. Um, before that, let me just say what's up, everyone. Courtney Rollins, the Life in Transitions Experts podcast host here uh, to discuss everything that's um, related to helping people through the biggest transitions in their life. My goal is to help folks deal with the house and the stuff when they're either going through a probate or if they're uh, hopefully... Um, or if they're helping a family member or someone receive uh, some type of senior care or long-term care, I like to help in both cases. Sometimes in both situations, a property and the things, the stuff that are in the property can get in the way to a convenient solution to helping either pay for long-term care or uh, help uh, with some of the equity that needs to be unlocked to distribute to heirs or to pay off some of the claims that may happen in the probate process. So at any rate, that's a long thing to say. Um, a long thing to say is my job uh, to, to, to be as knowledgeable as I can. And fortunate enough, I was down there and I was giving a cheat sheet because when you're going through the probate process and the probate process, again, if you in North Carolina or um, it's in every state as well, different iterations, but the principles are the same. But if you pass away with, assets and even debt in your name, in your soul, in your name, then um, they're more than likely, depending on the size of your estate and maybe some other small factors, you are responsible for, um, <clears throat> for not you, but someone is responsible for uh, settling the estate, paying the debts, paying the heirs, and transitioning any ownership that needs to be transitioned if it's you settle in your name. And so one of the challenges for someone who is the personal representative, and that's the person that's either assigned as the executor or executrist, as noted by the will, or an administrator, because uh, it's not there was no will left behind, or somehow um, there needs to be someone designated, and we don't have anyone though designated administrator. Either way, you're not awfully often referred to as the personal representative in North Carolina, and settling and filing out the 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 inventory sheet is the challenging part. The first part is you're going to go down there and you're actually going to open up the actual estate, find out if it qualifies, you'll get your qualifications, you'll get your letters of administration if you're an administrator or letters of test date if you are uh, um, a, a the executor or executress. And then the next thing is now you have the, um, the responsibility to gather all the inventory, a collection of all the assets that a person owns. So let's take a look at this. If you are looking online, Great, awesome, love you. Hit that like and subscribe. Hope this is useful for you, hopeful, uh, useful for you. Um, but if you're not, if you're listening to podcasts, definitely suggest you go to Life and Transitions Experts and check out this episode um, on inventory sheet, cheat sheet um, to help you out. So state of North Carolina, you'll put Durham, North Carolina here, or Durham County if you are in Durham, but you'll put the material here. And what you're looking for are the values of the decedent's estate at the time of death. Um, and you have 90 days from the time that you all have been qualified as the uh, administrator or um, executor to fill this out. All right, so you put the deceased's name there. And part one is the property of the estate. So part one has seven sections, but really six sections. Um, the section one is where you're going to put the accounts, all the accounts that are owned in the sole name of the decedent. That's the bank account, savings, checking, CDs, money markets, any other account uh, in the sole name of the decedent. Make sure you include the account numbers. Um, all supporting documents, and of course, how much was in there at the time of the death. And of course, with the letters of admin or test date that you have, the bank can give you that information and you can just make sure you gather it, collate it together. Part two, you're going to put all accounts that are joint accounts, but without the right of survivorship on there. So they're joint accounts, they're only jointly, but there's not a right of survivorship designated. So you need to put down how much is actually owned by the decedent at the time of the death or was owned. And of course, supporting documents. All these are going to ask for supporting documents, which are bank statements or what's given by the um, the um, the entity that's, that, that you're requesting information from. 
Uh, number three is where you put other securities like stocks and bonds that are in the sole name or jointly owned without the right of survivorship. And need to identify the type of security, whether it's a stock, bond, you know, uh, treasury bond. Um, and also, if they're a member of an LLC, what's their membership percentage in LLC? What other partnerships interests do they have? Um, at the date of the death, what's the fair market value of all of those interests in those? So if they own a business or if they own an LLC or other things that are still operating, um, you need to place that information there. And you're putting all the information in and on the right side of the document, you'll place the actual value. So these ones that have percentage owned by the seed, you'll put the full value, then a percentage owned and put in the value section on the right, the actual value that's owned by the decedent. Section four, any cash that was left behind or any undeposited checks that were left behind, you would put there um, as well. And then section five is the, all the personal property. That's the vehicles, including the VIN number, the year, the make, the model, um, clothing, furniture, anything that can be, it can be listed for the yard sale value. And if you did sell it in a yard sale or some transaction, maybe Facebook marketplace or some other place, you'll place the actual value that you sold it for there as well. And then section six and section seven are really the same thing, but they're talking about real estate will to the estate. So this is will to the estate that's directed by the will to be sold. And the proceeds, uh, will you place that, um, you place the legal description and the uh, information rega regarding the proceeds of the sale uh, for each parcel uh, in the next section. And, and then section seven is property that is will to be sold, directed to be sold, but has not been sold yet. So, Section six is if the property is sold and section seven is the property has not been sold. And then a total all, all that in the value column, you'll total that up and that's total part one. You'll place that in the section and you'll expect to pay at that time 0 0.004 of that amount. So you'll multiply 0 0.004. So it's 0.4%. So if it's uh, 100,000, then if I do my math right, I believe that's $40 if I'm not mistaken. Let me... Double check. I taught second grade, folks, so that's why I take advantage of the tools around me. You're probably laughing out there if you know that already, but 0.004. That's $4? No, wait. 4000 times 0 0.004. All right, that's $4 right there. Well, that's really good. Um, but again, the state's not going to be 1000 so it has to be a minimum of time it's recording 30000 So. You can imagine the states get up there pretty high in the millions um, with all the stocks and insurances or and houses and um, that the price can come up. That's why it's so important that we, if we do pass away, that we try to have things in other legal instruments like trust and other spaces where it does not have to go through probate and be charged that amount. Now, part two, this is all property and stuff that can be used if needed to pay the claims. So these are like joint accounts with the right of survivorship. So there is the right of survivorship there. And you're gonna list the bank accounts just like you did in part uh, one, section one. Um, you'll add you know, supporting documents and information there. Um, and in part section two is stocks and bonds that are jointly owned with the right of survivorship or with the registered and the beneficiary um, that form that's automatically transferred to the person, other person by death. So, you know, insurances and stocks and other things, can uh, you can designate that. And you need to put all that information, like the signature cards of those informations, um, of those uh, that information there as well in that section. Um, you also place any personal property that's um, that may be recoverable uh, under the uh, GS28A15-10 Act. And I'll put a link to that information there so you can uh, we can look that up and explore that. And then section four is any real estate except uh, uh, other entirety properties like life estate and um, real estate that's willed to the estate, which you've already put on the other section. But here you'll put the fair market value at the date of the death of any other real estate that's outside of uh, being willed and um, outside of, of, excuse me, is that a blank? But uh, outside of being willed that has been sold, that's willed to be sold and outside of those that are willed to be sold but haven't been sold yet. Excuse me. And then in part three, you'll designate whether or not this is a wrongful death claim um, act and follow accordingly. If you have an attorney, you'll put the information there and the attorney's phone number and then all that information in there. And this will be um, notarized and the, the clerk's office can notarize it. So if you want to you know, set up an appointment, which remember that can take a couple of months because they're super busy down there and these take a while. So make sure you if you need extensions or anything like that, you definitely check in.
But um, regardless, they can do the they can notarize it there on the spot and watch you do this, do the you know write your signature, your John mm -hmm. Hancock. All right, I hope that was helpful. Um, I'll actually put a link to this actual inventory cheat sheet um, in the show notes, or you can actually DM me or message me if you want to have a copy of it, and I'll send it over to you. Make sure you get that. All right, folks, it's Courtney Rollins, Rising Tides. It was all sales. <laughs>